On this 33rd Wednesday in Ordinary Time, let us pray with a reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. While they were listening to Jesus speak, he proceeded to tell a parable because he was near Jerusalem and they thought that the kingdom of God would appear there immediately. So he said, A nobleman went off to a distant country to obtain the kingship for himself and then to return. He called ten of his servants and gave them ten gold coins and told them, Engage in trade with these until I return. His fellow citizens, however, despised him and sent a delegation after him to announce, We do not want this man to be our king. But when he returned after obtaining the kingship, he had the servants called, to whom he had given the money, to learn what they had gained by trading. The first came forward and said, Sir, your gold coin has earned ten additional ones. He replied, Well done, good servant. You have been faithful in this very small matter. Take charge of ten cities. Then the second came and reported, Your gold coin, sir, has earned five more. And to this servant too, he said, You, take charge of five cities. Then the other servant came and said, Sir, here is your gold coin. I kept it stored away in a handkerchief, for I was afraid of you, because you are a demanding person. You take up what you did not lay down, and you harvest what you did not plant. He said to him, With your own words I shall condemn you, you wicked servant. You knew I was a demanding person, taking up what I did not lay down, and harvesting what I did not plant. Why did you not put my money in a bank? Then on my return I would have collected it with interest. And to those standing by he said, Take the gold coin from him, and give it to the servant who has ten. But they said to him, Sir, he has ten gold coins. I tell you, to everyone who has, more will be given. But from the one who has not, even what he has will be taken away. Now as for those enemies of mine, who did not want me as their king, bring them here, and slay them before me. After he had said this, he proceeded on his journey up to Jerusalem. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Whether we like it or not, the one certainty left is that we'll have to leave this world sooner or later. It can't be denied. Though some people may want to deny it or reject it in a thousand ways, as if trying to hide the sun with one hand, it's impossible not to think about it. Both believers and non-believers experience the passage of time and will encounter death. I've recently heard a testimony of a soccer player who could get out of his drug addiction hell. He addressed those people who brag about their fame and fortune, saying, When we die... All of us are eaten by the same worm, no matter whether you're a rolling stone, someone who lives in a slum, or even myself. Maybe it'll take the worms a little longer to devour us if we're resting in a good quality casket, but the reality is that they'll devour us all the same. Harsh as it may sound, the truth is we shouldn't fear the end of the world. We shouldn't fear death. On the contrary, we should see it as our Passover. Regarding today's reading from the Gospel, we see that in the face of the people's anxiety over the coming of the Kingdom of God, Jesus tells them, tells us, this parable. If in those times people were anxiously waiting for the power and glory of God to be manifested forever, today we can say the opposite is true. Sometimes we live as if we were anaesthetised. We have many things to do, goals to achieve and we just move on as if life on earth were eternal. What's wonderful and definitive seems to be here. Only few people think about eternal life. How naive. Oftentimes, we need to undergo great pain and suffering to realise that everything can come to an end at any moment. We try so hard to lead relatively comfortable lives that we don't realise we tend to create our own little paradises on earth. That's why this parable is helpful, both for those who want God to act as soon as possible, 
saving them the trouble of having to work hard here on earth, and for those who think that everything good belongs in this world, so they don't think about bearing fruits of love for something better that is yet to come. It seems it's not worth it. It would be good to evaluate ourselves to see what we're doing or what we're waiting for to start bearing fruit in this life. There's something that is crystal clear today. A priest who's a friend of mine put it this way. Jesus doesn't like it when we keep our coins stored away in a handkerchief. It's a way of life. Why would we keep things in a handkerchief, hide what was given to us, judge God as if he were too demanding and unfair? Why would we fear someone who gave us everything and only demands that we bear fruit? Sometimes we're afraid. Fear paralyzes us. But what are we afraid of? Are we afraid of God? If we fear God, we must think that what we really fear is the image of God that we created. Our idea of God. And that's a rather wacky idea which Jesus came to transform so that we aren't paralyzed in this life so that we're wise enough to put the money in a bank and later collect it with interest. God doesn't demand more than we can give. As we saw in the reading, one of the servants could earn ten coins, the other five, and the last one none. God doesn't care much about quantity, about how much each one of us can give, but there's always something we can give. But when life is void, it remains void. Let's think about what we're investing in, how we're using the goods and talents that God has given us. It would be regrettable that we stand in front of him, just with the very thing he gave us. May we have a good day, and may the blessings of our merciful God, the Father, Son and Holy Spirit descend upon our hearts and remain forever.